Hello everybody and welcome back to another CB Showtunes tutorial. Now today what we're going to be getting into is setting up an array function to be able to basically enable and disable game objects um, and all that sort of fun stuff. So right here, if you notice we walked inside this little thing and it had that happen. And I press E, it builds the first step. Then press E again, it builds the second step. And if I keep pressing E, nothing happens, which is what we want. And if you notice inside the debug panel, Nothing's there as well, so we have no errors, um, unlike you would see in a lot of different uh, tests. Okay, so let's go ahead and cover setup first, and then we will get into actually building this, or inside the script, which of course I will post down below inside the comment section, so you don't have to copy it all off yourself. Okay, so starting off, I have this empty game object that I placed inside the scene. On this game object, I simply put a mesh render and a cube mesh filter. You could, of course, adjust this to whatever you want it to be. I just put it there so I could see what I need to walk into. Um, the mesh render, obviously, just to get the uh, color or appearance, uh, you could change that to whatever you want it to be. Uh, like I said, I just put it there just because, and you can always get rid of it if you want to. Um, the next thing that you're going to need to do is get a box collider and set it as is trigger. And of course, like I said, we'll get to this script later, and you'll need to add it to this game object. Okay, as children of this game object, uh, we're going to put step one, step two, and step three. Now, step one's if I actually enable all these. Um, step one is pretty much just a stage where it's not going to show anything. Um, I have it set up to where it does show something, but whenever we run the script, it's not going to actually show up on the first step because it's step zero. Um, so just keep that in mind. Step one will not actually appear. Uh, now step two is going to be the first step that it's going to show whenever we press the E button down. And of course, step three is going to be the last one that's going to appear. And of course, every single one of these is going to enable and disable until step three is the last one there. Okay, so go ahead and disable all these different steps or however many steps that you want it to be. And we'll get into the script. Now, keep in mind, we can always set this to as high as we want. So we can set it to like eight. And of course, if I tried to go higher than eight on the curve step, whenever we press play, so let me go and press play. Um, if I try going higher than that, it adjusts my number of curve steps down to what it needs to be instead of it being greater than at all. Okay, so we're gonna adjust that back down and call it good. Okay, so we're gonna put that as zero and let's head over here into our script. Now for this, it's going to be a very simple array system. So if you worked with arrays before, then it's going to be pretty easy for you. Okay, so starting off, we have a public game object, as you could see, as an array. And we're going to call this build steps. Now build steps is just a name. You could call it whatever you want it to be called. You could call it player health bar, whatever you want to call it. Um, next thing that you're going to need to do is get a public int called cur step. Uh, this you could set as private, but I'm using it inside the inspector. So uh, I went ahead and made it public. Okay, underneath the void start, you're going to set cur step is equal to zero. So you're going to make sure that we are at the beginning number. Okay. And that's actually also the main reason why we're not actually having step one enabled because we're currently at step one. Okay, so on underneath void update, we're going to basically do exactly what this is. Stops code if there's no game object in array. So this little uh, function right here, if build steps dot links is less than zero, then return. It's just saying we're not gonna run anything below that if you know this happens. Okay, and we're going to say if cur steps or set max links of array. So if cur steps is greater than build steps dot links minus one, 
Uh, keep in mind, whenever you're working with arrays, you will need to subtract one per, otherwise it will not work. Um, typically because if your curse step is at 10 and your build steps dot links is at nine, they're equal because build steps or the array function actually, typically speaking, starts at zero as number one instead of it being one at number one. Okay, so basically we just run this saying curse steps is equal to that minus one. It's just a simple function. Okay, now outside of that uh, little function, we're going to create a void on trigger stay. And you do not need this or this if you don't want it. I have it there just for reasons. Uh, so yeah. All right, starting off, whenever you're entering this, we're just going to disable that mesh render for our, um, I guess you could say building, you know, over here, uh, our mesh render and all. We're basically going to be disabling it, so we're no longer going to be able to see that uh, material. Okay, and that's pretty self-explanatory. We're just getting the game object, the component, the mesh render, and then setting it to false. Okay, now time for the last final piece of the puzzle to make it all work. So this right here tells us what button we're pressing down. So if you want to change that, just change this button right here to whatever you want it to be. And then we're going to be setting if, or inside this, we're going to say if curse step is greater than or equal to zero and and curse step is less than build steps dot length minus one, then we're going to have this happen. Now, the reason why we did it this way instead of using the for function like most people would use is because I ran into so many issues with that. So I created my own function for this. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to disable the current game object. Uh, so we're going to say build step array curse step dot set active is equal to false. Now I know that sounds weird. We're going to disable the game object and then re-enable it later. But you got to consider, right in between here, we're going to say curse step plus equals one. So in scripting or programming, the code runs from top to bottom. So we're going to disable the current game object. Then we're going to add one to that game object. And then we're going to re-enable the game object. So it just skipped from one to two, two to three. And then since we can't go any higher than three, because we only have... Uh, three steps, then that's it. So it's a really, really cool setup. And just in case you guys want to see it again, just to make sure that it all works fine and properly, here we go. Dut, dut, dut. Just like that. All right, I hope you guys liked this tutorial. If you liked it, please like, subscribe, check out some of the videos. If you have any questions regarding this tutorial, or any other tutorial if you have any sort of options or opinions on new tutorials inside the future just leave a comment inside the comment section below and i'll be happy to try to actually get to those all right i'll see you guys next time